G'day, I'm Ian Apples, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach beginners how to paint. Today I'm going to do a simple step-by-step -step tall palm scene with some sunshine and shadowing coming across the painting and something that's going to make you go, you know what, I like that. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. I'll grab some craft paint and a little bit of retarder. Then I'll bring you over here and we'll get right into it. I've got the craft paint and I've got retarder and I want to blend that together on the brush on the easel there and simply paint in this canvas from about the sand level which is about here and get the rest of that just slopped right on there get it right on there this is going to create the base for our colors to blend and merge acrylic colors because acrylics Without this, it can be hard and difficult to make them blend like oils do. So I'll get that on there, the craft paint, student paint, poster paint. It's just a soft body acrylic white, titanium white. All right. This is only a small little half-size canvas I'm using here. Now I'm going to just simply wipe that brush, and I want to get the sky colour on there, which is cerulean blue. So down here I've got cerulean blue. I don't usually come on this time, but I thought I will. I've got some time to spare. So I'm going to grab some cerulean blue and start at the top of the painting. And I need to, where's my mouse? I need to um, bring it down to the horizon line. All right. So there's the top. My horizon line is about here. So that's the sky. I'll zoom back a bit. Okay, let's get this crisscrossed on there. Now I want to wear it down. It's going to get a little bit lighter as it comes to my horizon line. The white paint on there has made it. There we go. Going right across the canvas now in big full strokes. Beautiful, simple sky that was. Very simple. Now, what I want to do is get some... I've got some permanent linser in here. And I've got some greys as well. Some grey. Now, I'm going to get that permanent linser in and mix some of it with that blue. Just to get a bit of a vibe in the atmosphere going. So I'm looking for the right colour, the right colour. So I'm just mixing those two together. But sort of that purpley grey colour. Now I do want a bit of grey in it because there's not a, enough there. There we go. That's what I want for the top of the horizon line over the water. And where are we? There's the water there. That's there. So this is going to be roughly about here. So I'm just going to put it right on and I want it to fade away into the sky. So I'm going to crisscross it up if I can to push it up just so I'll get a nice blend of it fading into the sky there like that. There we go. Done. That's it. All over Red Rover for the sky. Um, I do need some little clouds down there. So what I'm going to do is find myself a small fan brush, just something I can use. And I'm going to get a bit more of that paint now and add some more red and blue to it to get a darker colour. Just there like that. Just a darker colour. And imagining my clouds are in the sky here, just some very little clouds here, just long lineal little busted up ones going along the horizon line there like this, like that. Nothing too big. They're very lineal, these ones. 
meaning just long little distancey ones like that. There we go. Now you can, if you want, blend them down. I'm going to use the most smallest blending brush I could find. I do have some small ones here. I'm going to use this one just to soften them down into the horizon line there. Get those lines dragged, get that soft, tickle the top a bit so it doesn't look so brush stroked. Bottom of that, get it down. I'm just pulling it down, dragging some tails off it so it's got lineal aspects to it. There we go, because these are very, it's just the way they are. All right. That's our clouds done. Now what I want to do is, what am I going to do next? I suppose I could get it from about there. I've got to dry that for the lower half. So this this part of the pole doesn't have any um, retarder in it. It doesn't really need it here. And we'll get all the bottom mapped in to there just up to our horizon line there and then I will put some mask and tape there so I can get the coloured paint on there. Now I'm putting everything on before the palm tree because the palm tree's got to sit in front of it all. So I don't want to put the palm tree on first and try and paint around it. Okay, I'm going to grab some tape. And just go straight across my horizon line there. There we go. And what colour do we want our water? We want the water. I do have some turquoise. I've got to find it. It's in a tube. Uh, here it is. So the water's going to be turquoise. There we go. A bit of turquoise there. And that'll lighten up with the um, white that's on the canvas as well so I'll grab some of this turquoise and get that up on the water there coming right across here right across there and come down to your sandy bit wherever your sand's going to be about there now I want to get some of the cerulean blue so I'll fish some of that out of there without getting any red. And I just want to chisel it onto the edge of my brush like so, so I can control where it's going to go into the water there. Because I want it mainly, where's that tape? There it is. So I'm going to stamp this on like so, mainly out there. Get a bit more. This is a real simple painting a beginner can grasp. And then I'm going to simply waterfire that across I'm gonna to have to get a bit more let's say a bit more of the um, turquoise that blue was a bit weak I want it mainly out there darker so I'm just gonna wipe the brush and gently waterfire that there we go see that we've got some beautiful darker areas of water out there I can pull the tape off and hopefully we've got a beautiful Perfect. All right, now we're going to get the sand in there because we need some sand. Now this sand, there's your water. This sand's right in front of it. Um, it's not lacing and joining to the water because it's on a bit of a crest. So you won't see. Okay, so the sand, I want grey. I'll bring you down here onto the easel. We'll get some grey. What colour was I using for the sand? Oh, yeah, grey, burnt umber and white. Where's me burnt umber? Bit of burnt umber down there. Bit of white. And I'll get a flat brush to mix that up. So I want enough just for the bottom area there. So... 
we'll bring this over here. That's plenty. And I'll start mixing that in until I get the vibe I want for the sand. So it's just burnt umber and white. It's a very pale sand, which is there. And now we're going to add, get a bit darker actually, because the gray is going to gray it up a bit as well. There we go. Now I want to grab the gray and tone it with the gray there. Oh, I'm going to need a lot more gray. That's because I'm putting the, trying to put the light color into the big dark pile. So that's why that's happened. I normally do it the other way around. Here we go. I've got far too much there, but that's the vibe I want. Yeah, that's the color sand I want. I'm just going to use this flat brush for now and probably get this right up to where I want it. Yeah, see how that's sitting on it now. Get across there, come on. Beautiful, love it. I'm going to use a, sh that, <laughs> that flat brush is very munted. What I mean by munted is it's got no good edge on it. So I'm just going to use another one now, just with a decent edge, just to try and get a nice edge here. There we go. Because see, you got to, this is on the hill crest here where you walk down to the actual water line. So we'll get this pretty much there. Okay. I'll grab another flat to mix that up with, a stupid flat, a buggered up flat. So here we go. We're going to mix up our yellow ochre and our permanent alindrin just to get a value here. This is just going to be some sunlighted shadows casting across the sand. And then we want to add a little bit of white, bring some white over here and get this to the vibe I want. A bit more white. Sort of like a skin colour, really. But anyway, that's the colour I want. And I want to get some light shimmering from the edge on that sand coming down. This is how a beginner can make some really easy but effective paintings. Just like that, see? It's sort of coming down and then straight. Okay, we've got some more, let's say about here, coming along. Now the sand colour between this and that other one, that's what I'm keeping a judging eye on. Okay. I'll get a little bit pointier there. There we go. And then after you've done it, if it needs two passes, simply give it another pass, okay? Let's get another big glary bit about here somewhere, right on the edge. Don't leave a bit of the sand colour on the edge there. Keep it all in the same direction. And this is just a simple, effective painting a beginner can do. Now we've got a nice big piece coming here. Boom. Boom, like this. Now you've got to be careful because that paint underneath, it's got the craft paint there. And if I'm not too careful, I've got to dry it really well. Otherwise it's going to rip it. It's starting to rip right there, if you could see. And the edges of this just has to be fared out. I'll fix that bit there up. Just fanned out. It doesn't have to be a sharp edge like so. Now, I need a bit more white in that. I feel it's a little bit too pink. There we go. Just to get some there. Oh, 
excuse me. That's pretty much it for the shadows there. Now, with your shadows, if you feel you've done some mistakes there, that's fine. You can just use your simple sand colour to push them back. But that's the light hitting across the beach there. Now we're going to do our wickedly wicked palm. Um, I've got, where's all my flats? Here they are. I'm going to the, the, the junky flat pile, and I've got a good pile right there. Okay, palm tree, palm tree. Um... Simply grab some burnt umber. This is a basic, simple palm tree, okay? And we want to map in our palm tree. So he's just going to come right from the... I'll back about here somewhere. He's going to come right from about here, and he's going to lace. So I want him to come all the way there, and he's just going to lace all the way up. All the way up to about here, a real nice tall one, this one. There like that. Can you see that? Yes, you can. And then we're going to just simply use a flat brush and just make him windy and wavy and bendy because palm trees grow like that. They're not dead straight. And I'll, I'll work on the base getting the base at least the thickness that I want and I'll get my elbow out of the paint you can't see that but my elbow just my massive forearms just laid in the paint because they're so huge it's difficult having huge arms at times but I'll get by now I'm simply going to adjust the width of this trunk with this base colour it is a base colour Try and get both sides as best as possible. And then I'll give it a dry. It needs to be dry. Now I want to grab some of the yellow ochre down here. Yellow ochre. And I've just got sap green. Um, I want to get some of the yellow ochre first into here to get a lighter colour of that. How are we there? There we go, I'm happy with that. And where are we? From about here, I want to get, say about here, I want to get this part lighter. So go to the very edge of that. Don't leave a dark edge there. Go to the very edge of that and scrumble this. Make sure I've got no paint on my hands. And I want to scrumble this all on the left-hand side and bring it in towards the middle of the palm trunk. Very easy for a beginner to achieve this. Now I'm going to put a little bit of white just to make it a bit opaque. I've just stamped some white in it. You'll see when I bring it back up here what it's doing. Watch. You can see what that white's done now. Bring it pretty much right away around. Don't have too much of the dark on one edge because it's only a skinny trunk. If the detail police can find something wrong with your painting, they bloody will, you know. So we always got to, at times, just at times, because they don't deserve all the time, we need to please them buggers, don't we, eh? Okay, that's looking reasonable. Let's see, the, see how the sun's probably over here just, ooh, ooh hitting it it's shadowed here and you can see it's hitting there now what we're going to do here is grab some gray so i've got the gray down here somewhere yeah i'll just simply wash that and wipe it now what i just done up there you can do i'm going to grab the gray now and 
graulate that burnt umber down here. And, oh, oh, hang on a minute. I also need some black. I've got any black will do. If you want to know what black I've got, this is carbon black. I'm going to put some of that black in there now. And this is going to be the bottom half. No, I don't want it to... Where'd that colour go? I'll get a bit of yellow ochre okay, now just to lighten it up a bit. There we go. See, the darks and lights are what makes paintings more fabulous and realistic. Yeah, Barbara Barbarson, she um, gets carried away with me arms. But anyway, now we're going to just simply add the dark in here with this colour right against the edge there. Make the edge with this. What we did with that lighter colour up there, we're doing the same with this now. Just up there. Even little bits of the, the base colour there. Now I want to merge that where they go, like that there. Boom, bitty, boom. And then we're going to get some pure black just to um, get in here as well. Now, does that showing that? It is showing it, but not as well as I would like it on the camera. But it looks good in real life. Now, grabbing the black... Simply just grabbing the black in the brush, just very little bit, very little. We just need some real dark aspects in here now. Just fumble and play with it. If you know what I mean, a little bit there. I'll just have a look at that. Now, I will up the aperture a bit just so you can see that. There we go. There, that's a bit bright. I've just taken some of the paint off the brush so I can scrumble some of that and make it less stampy look and make it look more realistic looking. There we go. That's our trunk done. That's the trunk done. You can see how the light's shadowing on it. I don't like that bit there, so I'm just going to fix that up. Grab some of that other grey there, put back there. Now there is there, there is no shadow here because from this point on it's all shadow. Okay, now I'm going to clean that brush and we're going to make simple palm prongs. Oh, so down here to get some realistic colour, we're going to grab... I'm using sap green here, so I'll make a base colour, which is sap green and black, just to blackulate that sap green. It's it's still mostly green, but it's very dark, so it's gone like a perylene green. And we've got that to map in our frongs, prongs. Okay. So rise the camera up there, up to the top here, and we'll get some... Um, well, first I like to give my palms some teasers, just coming down like that. Just like that. This is my method. You stick to your own method when you know how to do something. And then we're going to put some long pull out, let it tear, let it tear, let it tear, let it tear. There we go. Uh, we'll get another one, let's say, all the way over here. Wham. Letting it tear like that. See how easy your palm is to do, huh? Now we'll get some, I mean, you can go really detailed, but these are, I'm just showing a beginner what they can do. Bang, look at that. Tear it down with a flat brush, so easy. We'll get another one coming down here. Wham. And... We'll get another one, let's say, here, bang, bang, bang. But you don't have to say bang, I always say bang them. Okay. See, so just straight, get the angle you want and pull it down. Bit of a curve on the edge of it. Now, they look a bit undernourished when you finish this stage. I want to show you what you do to get rid of that undernourishment look undernourished vibe within your palms because you don't want your palms looking undernourished. We'll get one right up here blowing in the wind. 
See, I was going to have a moon in this one, but I won't worry about it. And let's say something here. Okay, there's your palm. Now, see how it looks a bit undernourished? I'll get another one here as well because it's quite a full palm, this one. Now, what you do to get rid of the undernourished vibe of it is just load up your brush again and get some little points in the middle like that here, like that, and just make it kind of busy. Busy here, look, some stuff just scraggling out there, coming across wherever you're making it look busy. That's it. Now that needs a dry. So we'll just step back here to get an idea how this painting is looking. With the acrylics, putting the highlights works better on when it's dry. Now we're just simply going to grab, I've got to wash that brush first because that's got black in it, that mixture that I just made up, don't forget. Now we're going to make our green. So we'll grab our sap green again and we're going to start mixing it with the yellow ochre here. Okay. To the vibe we want. There we go, I'm happy with that. It's a little too... I need more yellow ochre. So I'll get that in there. To me, the yellow ochre in your greens mix makes a more realistic colour if you want to go for uncartoony looks. There we go. Okay, so now I've got to clean this brush because it's all goobly glooped and glugged up. It's not fine to do what I'm want it to do so I'm just going to simply give it a wipe actually I'll give it a quick wash and a wipe that way I can load it up and get the the palm prongs in front and behind each other so just look at it here and I feel like I don't know this one can be behind so I'll just sort of right on the edge Take your time, take your time. There's no rush in any point. Let it scratch away. Let it scratch away. There we go. We'll probably get that one right to the edge there. And then we'll get some more. Uh, I'll bring this one right from the guts of it, right out here. Tear it away. There we go. We've sunken that other one back. Uh, we'll get this one probably behind as well. There we go. Uh, this one here. Too much paint on my brush. Wow, my camera zoomed right in there, isn't it? Because eh? you know palms, a lot of them have got that dead colour within them. They're not always wonderfully green. We'll get this one right from the guts there. Pull him around like that. We're pretty much going over the darker colour that we put there, highlighting it. Get this one there. And then this one can come right from the guts of it, right in there, coming down. Mm -hmm. And this one. Get a bit there somewhere, a bit here somewhere, something there, something here, bits of bobs like that. See what I'm doing? Just bits and bobs because our other highlights really going to accentuate the vibe of this tree. Three, three colours. Zoom back from that. It's looking like an okay palm, wouldn't you say? I've got to give it a quick dry. All right, so we'll give that a quick dry. We've given it a quick dry, picking up that brush. And now, that colour, I've got some cadmium yellow medium. And we've got our yellow ochre. So let's grab some of this and mix with more yellow ochre, okay? So we're simply adding more yellow to that colour there. You'll see what we're going to get. And then we're going to use the yellow to get that honeycomb vibe and bring some more green back in there. Oh, there we go. Look at that different highlight. That's 
the magic you want to happen on your palette. All right, and we're going to just gingerly and gently highlight that now. Putting what we want in front. So I want something here in front, just like that. And I want something here in front, something there. Okay, then this, you want it not heavy on your brush. You want this to tear. You want it to tear. Get a bit more. How's that looking? Yeah, that's okay. This is coming right from the guts of it now. The nice bit of light hitting that somewhere. Bits of stuff there. Because you might even have something right there like that. Try not to go over the whole lot of it because you'll end up destroying what you've done. I just want some light hitting up here. Maybe some light hitting up here. A little bit on that. A little bit behind there. A little bit on that. And like I said, if you've done too much brightness, simply go back with the darker colour. I'm going to grab me very darker colour just to show you what I mean. You might want to get some darker vibes back in here somewhere where you feel you might have destroyed it. I'm just showing you in there because it's a tutorial. How's that looking? A bit weird here. I'll try and fix that up. Wipe that off the brush. Put a straight line there. There's our palm. Now I've got some grey here. I will... Where'd the grey go? Here it is here. I just want to see if this is... Yep. Yeah. I want to get some of this now tinkled onto the sand. You know how sand has hundreds of little footprints in it? That's what I'm just trying to make with this. But it's not going to be as easy as I think. But i just got to keep doing what I'm doing here now for that to look like that. How's that looking in the camera? I think it's... I've got to go back to the other aperture. Aperture. Just sort of doing this over all the sand there. If you're happy with your sand colour, leave it. Get my head out of the way. Oh, where's a little bit of black? I just want to, that grey is not quite dark enough, so I've just put the tinsiest bit of black in there just so as we can see what's on the sand here. There you go, look at that. The one I was putting on before was a little bit too bright, eh? There we go. And you get a gist of what I'm trying to achieve here. You probably could have flicked it, but I'm trying to just get this done in a matter of a fact, reasonably quick way, just for the filming sake, because I'm live. And if you've got any questions you want to ask me, simply comment below and ask me any question you want. I answer all questions. And if you want a shout out in my Friday night live, simply comment below and tell me to give you a shout out and it'll be shouted out in my next following Friday night live. There we go. We've got some, uh, what do you call it? divots in our sand. I'm just putting a rim of light across here as well. There we go. Anyway, I am going to grab my liner, my script liner. Which colour have we got here? I'll use a simple black. 
And I'll just put my autograph on here. Now, where are we? Are we there? Yes. So I'll autograph this right down here. Now, because this is a small painting, whoever buys the next painting, because so, people buy my art, all my art's available to buy, and whoever buys the next order, the next order, this will be thrown in with it. Okay? So sometimes I have little bits left laying around like this, and when someone buys a proper painting, if I find little bits that I think they might appreciate, I chuck them in there as well. So keep a lookout for surprises. And I want to thank all my patrons that support my content as well every month. There we go. Look at that. We've got a simple palm for a beginner. And I know you can do it. Well, what a lot of fun that was. When you know what to do, you can create absolute wonderful art. Now, just remember, if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends. But if you don't, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.